am Lisa Colucci, one of the life coaches at Queen Being. Today, I am here to talk about gaslighting and recovering from narcissistic abuse and when they gaslight you. So let's get started. I have a question here from a survivor. It says, Lisa, I've been educating myself on narcissism, gaslighting, and projection for about six months now. My brain understands these concepts, but my heart is really struggling. I'm currently in a high conflict custody battle and recently received hate mail from the ex attacking my parenting skills and my intelligence. I know these things that he said are not true and not valid. However, they still have gotten to me. How do you train yourself to not internalize gaslighting? So <clears throat> let's talk about gaslighting in general to begin with and then get to the question. Let's look at some examples of gaslighting. I mean, most people, so gaslighting. Okay, so your, your truth is twisted when you're being gaslighted. Questions that you may hear are things like, why are you making that up? Why are you saying that? That's not true. That's not how it happened. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear that. Or you're too sensitive. You're too jealous. This is because of you. This is your, your issue. Um, everyone says, everyone says that you do this. You should really take a look at that. <laughs> okay. Um, the, things like disputes that turn into uh, blame shifting, uh, lies, out and out lies. You catch them in something and they completely lie about it. And they do it in a way that makes you feel somehow you're responsible often. Um, projecting, that's a big, people project, it happens. It's what we do. We're living inside our own little psyche and we project onto other people. It happens, but but toxic projecting they will accuse you of the very thing that they're doing so that they don't have to be accountable for the thing that they're doing. Or they will um, use it to control you. And sometimes they do it while playing the victim. So if you say, you know, why are you, why, why are you late? What happened? And you say it just like that. Why are you late? What happened? No, no accusation. What are you, what are you saying? What, what are you hiding? Okay, anyway, we know what gaslighting is, at least in that <laughs> regard. Those are some examples. But here is what you may feel when you're being gaslighted. A lot of times it's hard to tell if it's just poor communication or you're actually being gaslighted. But the thing is, if you start to second guess yourself all the time, something's wrong. Okay, um, you think it's your fault and that you actually are too sensitive. You may even think you're abusive. Um, you may know it's not your fault but you feel like you're to blame. Does that make sense? There's this, like the cognitive dissonance is huge. It's confusing. You feel confused. You may not even remember what you're arguing about or what the original thing you were upset with was. You, it may come out of left field. Like you don't know why this person's attacking you. It feels like bullying. You feel like you don't appreciate all the good you have. In other words, they're telling you how good everything is and how you should appreciate all this wonderful things they do for you. And you may actually believe it, <clears throat> or you may not. But in any case, <laughs> often until you understand what's happening, you start to feel ungrateful. You make excuses for them. You hide the truth from other people. You don't tell anyone. You cannot make decisions for yourself. There's another one. You start to realize that you can't make any choices in your life. You feel like you can't do anything right. Like there's no, you believe the lies they're telling you and the twisted truths they're telling you because sometimes there's an element of truth and then the twist is so extreme that you get thrown off topic. You get thrown off guard, off, off balance. That's the word. You get thrown off balance. And um, you may feel frustrated all the time in every conversation, completely frustrated, like almost like, it's like kind of like you're in a dream and you're talking and no one in the dream understands you and you're you're actually hearing your words, but everyone else is in the dream is hearing mumbling. That's kind of what it feels like. You cannot get yourself heard. You cannot feel heard. You don't feel like you're expressing yourself in a way that's being taken in and actually understood. Super frustrating. It's crazy making. Um, and you may feel the need to constantly explain yourself. And you may notice that you start doing that with everyone. Like someone says, well, why? And you go, oh, I'm sorry. And you start explaining yourself about everything you do or apologizing all the time. So those are some examples of gaslighting and what it feels like. So 
when you're in a situation like the survivor who I read the, the little question from where you have to deal with them because you're in a situation where you have to be around them or if you still haven't left them and you're dealing with this kind of gaslighting, some ways to deal with it. How, how, how do you, what do you do? What do you do? Because you can't just keep believing it. You can't, if you stay in it, it literally is crazy making. It makes you feel terrible. But there's some weird thing that happens, isn't there? That even though it's not working, you can't stop thinking about it or you have this desire to justify. It's really hard to gray rock. It's really hard to gray rock when, depending on how pervasive the gaslighting is, some of them are so good at it. It's kind of their mode of communication at a certain point, like the relationship breaks down to the point where you're either being love bombed or devalued or gaslighted. And this, it's this it's part of the cycle. It's, yeah, uh, Darla says it creates so much doubt. It really does. Um, it's the, the cognitive dissonance is the problem because when you see it, even though your head knows it, there's a piece of you that is kind of trapped in it. And I think that's what the survivor who wrote was talking about how how to not let it in when you have no choice but to deal with someone um, or you're still dealing with someone and you know you, you haven't yet made the choice not to or whatever the situation is. So say they send you a text or an email, read the text or email or listen to them. And as you're listening, like slow down. Don't just, you know, we want to read them with, especially when it's in writing, we want to read them really fast and we want to we want to, we like it swept into the drama before, like within three words, right? Three words. That's all I have to say. Bam. You're in that, you're in that email. You're, you're arguing with the piece of, you know, electronics while you're talking to it saying what, you know, you're reacting, right? So instead slow it down and read it piece by piece and identify the tactics as they're unfolding. They say, blah, blah, blah. You say, whoa, they're projecting there. Okay. They say, blah, 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 blah. And you say, oh, look at that gaslighting. Okay. And then you read the next part. And then the next part, and you say, oh, that's just blatant bullying. Okay. You know, look at them trying to play the victim. Okay. Some more gaslighting. Here we go. And as you, so in other words, you're, you're using your logic along for the ride instead of your emotions along for the ride. Because normally we read it and we say, and they say, you know, you're a terrible person and here's why, blah, blah, blah. And, and you're going, I am not. You're the one who did that. And you're, you know, you're arguing with the, with the gaslighting and it, it doesn't work. And especially when it's in writing, it's a little different in person because um, you can't slow it down. They're going to talk as fast as they want to talk and they're in your face and it's, there's a lot more pressure, but especially when it's in writing, they will not take accountability. We know this. So, and, and so you have to remember, you cannot change them. You can't change them. You can't make them see, you can't even make them see a middle ground in healthy conflict resolution. You have two people who are working and striving to find a middle ground so they can get along. Even if they're they're very adamantly um, be believing their side, they're still working toward finding a middle ground to either agree to disagree or find some way to, you know, make it work, right? But with a narcissist, it's their way or no way. So, and they don't change, you can't change them. So you don't need to even ever explain your truth because it's not what the conversation's about. The conversation's about them basically venting all over you, dumping all over you, projecting all over you. It's about them and their lack of um, emotional intelligence, their lack of emotional control and um, manipulation and control, trying to control you because they can't control themselves. You know, they, they, they need the world around them to be what they think it is. There is no reasoning, rationing. There's not even arguing. Like you can't even get louder and bigger because it won't work. All it'll do is make you feel crazy. And if you're in the middle of any court matter with them, you don't want to even remotely appear crazy. You want to be completely almost neutral and um, completely in control of yourself as best as you can. So don't engage. The problem with gaslighting and it, who wants their words twisted? Who wants their truth of who they are twisted? Nobody. It's horrible. And it's oh, the, the pervasive controlling manipulation of it is 
it's so difficult because it gets in. So you have to stop and tell yourself your, your own truth. If you're in person, do not say it out loud. Just say it to yourself in your head. You think of them kind of like if they're in person and they're just going on and on with the gaslighting, you think of them like, you know, the peanuts teacher where mar, 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 they're just making noise. And in your own head, you tell yourself a story about your side. You don't engage with them back like, oh, no, this, this. You just say, wait a minute, I know what happened. I know what the truth is. I was there. You know, I'm 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 part of this too. I, I'm valid and I matter. Doesn't matter in the situation because the situation doesn't matter. The conversation isn't a conversation, right? Um, stop. This is a hard one to hear, but it's true. Stop wishing for things to be different. Stop trying to make a shark into a goldfish. They will always be what they are. Don't try to make it to be different. You can't nice your way into it being different. You can't goodness your way into it being different. You can't love your way into it being different. It will always be as it is with them for whoever they're with and for whoever they're dealing with. So stop, stop, just stop. <laughs> that part is that part is accountability to yourself. When you feel yourself being pulled into it, wishing things could be different, realize that is um, just wishing. It's not, it's not something that is possible. You're not here to please them. Remember that. I mean, we know this, but sometimes we have to be told it. <laughs> they will not understand, says Darla. They will not understand. They do not care to understand because the point of the conversation isn't for them to understand. This isn't me and you talking and me going, what are you talking about? I don't understand. Wait, I'm trying to... Most of us are engaged in conversations to experience and understand the other person, right? That isn't what this is about. This is about them just bulldozing over the whole thing and having complete control over the whole thing with their own delusions. <clears throat> so don't fall into mirroring it back to them. Okay, when we respond to it, all we're doing is we're like reaction, stimuli, reaction. We're not taking a minute to uh, slow down enough to realize we're arguing with nonsense, okay? It's what they want anyway, they wanna throw you off especially if you're in a court battle. They want to throw you off. They want to totally make you look like you're insane so that they can get their way. So stay away from that. Non-engagement is the answer. Okay, so non-engagement. So if you're asking what to do for yourself, like not just what to do for them, you, you close the email, you're done looking at it, you know what it is, but you can't stop thinking about it. And so then basically your whole day is the next day, the day after however long it takes is spent back in the situation that you didn't create, that was completely thrown at you and that you really don't want to deal with, right? And you shouldn't have to because it's somebody else's mess. So what do you do? You don't engage in your own head. Stop the engagement the same way you would stop the engagement with them. Stop the arguing in your own head. <sighs> It's that's easier said than done, hence the big sigh. <laughs> but it's a pattern interrupt. Got a pattern interrupt. Um, find distractions, find set things up for yourself to. Okay, so one example could be give yourself 30 minutes to go over and over in your head, to journal about it, to scream and yell, to cry, whatever you need to do. Give yourself, set a timer, like for real, set a timer. Don't just go, oh, it's it's 11:30, I'll stop at 12. No, like actually set a timer for 30 minutes. Give yourself that time so that you validate what you're feeling and you don't feel silenced. Talk to someone, talk to a friend, talk, talk to your coach, your therapist, whatever, you you know, or write them a, a note for later so that you remember to talk about it later. Do something <clears throat> for you to let yourself express it. And then when the 30 minutes is up, stop, stop. Your time is up for that day. Then things you can do as you feel it slipping back in where you can't stop thinking about it is set another timer. But before you do, set up something to do that is distracting, engaging, interesting, busying, um, cleaning, uh, puzzles, crossword puzzles. Write a letter to, friend, to a friend. Oh, you could write a letter to a friend or an email to a friend about their life. Ask them questions. Uh, talk about something you know they've done. Something to get your mind off yourself off your your situation not off yourself but off your um off the narc and off the toxic narc i'm talking about it's over and done you're not in the narc's face you're just trying to get back on track with your own day right um 10 minutes 
set that timer, and do that thing. If you catch yourself slipping back into, oh, God, why did they say that? I am not a bad mother, whatever it is, you know, like, oh, I should say this. You know how we do. Stop yourself. This is my 10 minutes. No, go away. Thought, I'm going to do this and re-engage, re-engage. It takes practice. But giving yourself breaks because otherwise, you know, your mind, you're, you're creating um, neural pathways and loops of thought in your head, right? When you, when you are pervasively thinking about something. So you have to stop and hopefully create new, new thoughts. Give yourself breaks. If meditation, try that too. Um, use a guided one so that you have it with headphones or something so that you are able to focus on the words to help to actually calm your nervous system down. They're actually very effective. Okay, take care, everybody. Thank you. Goodbye.